Western blotting is a widely used laboratory technique in molecular biology and biochemistry. It is employed to detect specific proteins in a complex mixture extracted from cells or tissues. To prepare the samples, combine the cell or tissue-derived lysate with sample buffer containing a denaturing agent, such as SDS, and a reducing agent, such as beta-mercaptoethanol or DTT. This step denatures and reduces proteins in their complexes, coating them in a negative charge proportional to their molecular weight. To ensure optimal denaturation of the proteins in the sample, a heat denaturation step is usually recommended, boiling the sample at 95 degrees Celsius for 5 to 10 minutes. To separate the proteins within the sample, perform an SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis step. Prepare the apparatus by submerging the gel in running buffer. Load a molecular weight marker into the first well to serve as a size reference for your protein of interest. The molecular weight marker also serves as a quality control to assess later transfer efficiency. Then, load equal amounts of samples into adjacent wells. To measure protein concentration and normalize samples, a quantification assay, such as a Bradford assay or BCA, should be performed prior to combining the lysates with the sample buffer. After the last sample has been loaded, load an additional molecular weight marker into the final lane. This ensures ease of molecular weight determination of all samples upon signal detection. The principles of SDS PAGE are such that negatively charged proteins migrate towards the positive anode when a voltage passes through the system. This separates the proteins based on their molecular weight, with smaller proteins running faster and farther down the gel. Place the lid onto the electrophoresis tank and apply a voltage recommended by the power pack manufacturer. If the voltage is conducting correctly, bubbles will rise upwards from the bottom of the tank. Monitor your samples as they run down the gel. Stop the power just as the blue dye front reaches the bottom. After the SDS page has been successfully performed, the resolved proteins must be transferred onto a more robust medium for antibody staining. Typically, the proteins are transferred onto a PVDF, or nitrocellulose membrane. Remove the gel from the electrophoresis cassette and carefully release it from the glass or plastic casing. Soak the membrane and gel blotting paper in transfer buffer before constructing the transfer stack. Crack open the gel cassette using a gel opener. The stacking portion or wells of the gel can be removed prior to protein transfer. To construct the transfer stack, sandwich the membrane and the gel between the gel blotting paper, making sure that the membrane is closest to the positive anode and the gel is closest to the negative cathode. This ensures that the negatively charged proteins move out of the gel and embed themselves into the membrane. To ensure that the transfer voltage passes through the whole stack and enables efficient protein transfer, make sure to remove any bubbles using a small roller. Close the transfer cassette and place it in a semi-dry transfer machine. Turn on the power, making sure to use the recommended time and voltage settings appropriate for the molecular weight of your protein. To prevent nonspecific binding of the primary and secondary antibodies, the membrane should be blocked with a solution containing nonspecific proteins. Typical blocking solutions contain 5% nonfat milk, 
or 2 to 5% bovine serum albumin in tris buffered saline with tween 20. Incubate the membrane with blocking buffer under gentle agitation. It is recommended to incubate the membrane for one hour at room temperature or overnight at four degrees Celsius. The primary antibody specifically binds your protein of interest on the membrane. It should be diluted in the same solution as your blocking buffer, and the dilution factor will be antibody specific. The dilution factor and incubation time may need optimization, so always refer to the antibody datasheet and product specific protocols for initial recommendations. Typically, the membrane should be incubated with a primary antibody under gentle agitation for one hour at room temperature or overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Background signal is caused by nonspecific binding so wash steps should always be performed. Typically, wash buffer is composed of tris buffered saline or phosphate buffered saline with 0.1% tween 20. Pour off the primary antibody and rinse the membrane with wash buffer. After the initial rinse, incubate the membrane with fresh wash buffer for five to 10 minutes with agitation. Repeat this three times. During the wash step, prepare your secondary antibody dilution in blocking buffer. The dilution factor of your secondary antibody will be outlined in its data sheet. Secondary antibodies are conjugated to either fluorescent dyes or enzymes. They bind with high specificity to the primary antibody, allowing the detection of your protein of interest. Pour off the final wash buffer and incubate the membrane with the secondary antibody with agitation for one hour at room temperature. As with the primary antibody incubation step, the dilution factor and incubation times may need optimization. After incubation, pour off the secondary antibody and wash the membrane as shown previously. After the initial rinse, incubate the membrane with fresh wash buffer for 5 to 10 minutes with agitation. Repeat this three times. At this stage, the membrane should contain your protein of interest bound to its specific primary antibody, which is in turn bound to a conjugated secondary antibody ready for detection. There are multiple detection methods depending on the molecule that is conjugated to your secondary antibody. If the secondary antibody is conjugated to a fluorescent molecule, it can be directly detected using a digital imaging system. If it is conjugated to an enzyme, such as horseradish peroxidase, HRP, then an appropriate substrate must be added to the membrane prior to imaging. Before addition to the membrane, the chem-illuminescent substrate must be prepared by combining the solutions at a one-to-one -one ratio. Place the membrane onto a clean, dry imaging tray, making sure to blot off the residual wash buffer. Add the chem-illuminescent substrate to the membrane, ensuring equal distribution across all lanes. The substrate is oxidized by the conjugated enzyme, resulting in emitted light that can be detected by either X-ray film or a digital imager. Place the imaging tray into the imaging system, making sure to optimize your exposure times to ensure clear signal detection. The generated signal will appear as bands on the membrane that should correspond to the molecular weight of your protein of interest. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more immunoassay tips and tricks. Thanks for listening.